Hey guys, welcome back to another Blu-ray DVD collection update forward slash haul video. This one is for the months of April, May 2021. I've got a whole bunch of stuff being sent in from my friends over at the distributors, as well as a stack of titles here that I've either picked up locally or imported over the last couple of months. There's a whole lot to cover here, so let's get into it. All right, so we're gonna kick this off with a bunch of stuff sent in from my friends over at Vivision Entertainment. Firstly, taking a look at their latest wave of imprint titles. This is wave number six, I think. Uh, it's been an entire year since they first started releasing these, which is absolutely incredible. And we're now up to title number 40, as you can see this latest wave of six titles Take this from number 35 on the spine up to number 40. Now usually I would do a separate video for these, but I'm trying to just include them in the monthly hauls now to kind of streamline things a little bit. So we're gonna go over these um, in as much detail as I can uh, under the restrictions of these of these videos here. And let's start with number 35, which is Let It Ride. This one here stars Richard Dreyfus. He's kind of like a down and out of his luck uh, cab driver who gets this tip off of this uh, horse race that you can't lose on. It's kind of, I guess, been rigged by uh, a team of mafiosos or whatever. And he decides to go down to the to the, the betting track and place, place his bets. He ends up winning a bunch of money and he kind of gets addicted to gambling over the course of a day or a couple of days. And it kind of, it's just this really weird, quirky comedy movie. And as you can imagine, Richard Dreyfuss, he's got this really, again, quirky kind of style of humor. The transfer on this one is really great. In fact, the transfers on this entire wave of imprint titles is really fantastic. There's not one of these that I had any kind of real issues with, uh, but I will point out a few things as we go along the way. Uh, but this one looked great. Again, it's a movie from 1989, and it just lo it looks fantastic. This one here doesn't have a great deal in the way of special features. Uh, it's really just got an audio commentary by film historian Scott Harrison, which is from 2020. And it's got a small interview with the director, Joe Pitecar, which was recorded in 2020 as well. So those are both a new and I guess exclusive to this release here. Uh, it's also got a selection of deleted scenes and a theatrical trailer. All right, next up is Regarding Henry. This is a Harrison Ford film from 1991, the year I was born, a bit of a blast from the past. This is a film that's written by J.J. Abrams, or as he's credited in, in this, Jeffrey Abrams. This is one of the first things he did. He appears in it in like a really tiny little cameo as well. I thought this movie was quite good. This is one that I've wanted to see for a long time. I'm a big Harrison Ford fan, so this was uh, one of those Harrison Ford films that kind of has eluded me over the, over the years. I've just never had a chance to, to pick it up and check it out. So I finally got a chance to do it thanks to the imprint collection right here. This is a movie about this kind of ruthless New York City lawyer who really doesn't have a moral compass. And he one night he gets shot and he becomes paralyzed and has to learn how to, you know, talk and walk and all that kind of stuff again. And he has like this real kind of arc where he, I guess, through this ordeal learns to become a better person. It's a very sappy kind of movie, um, a very generic, but I quite liked it. It's quite a nice little movie. Again, transfer on this one is really great. A lot of these early 90s movies do come up really good on Blu-ray uh, in, uh, in their high definition uh, transfers because they are still very filmic and they've got that real kind of 90s really kind of color. So uh, re really good. It looks really, really nice. As far as special features go, this one doesn't have a great deal either. It's got an audio commentary by film critic Peter Tonguet, which was recorded in 2020, I'm assuming especially for this release. It's also got a selection of vintage interviews with Harrison Ford, Annette Benning, and Mickey Allen, which actually all look really great in high definition as well. They've all been cleaned up really nice, I guess taken from the original, um, you know, the original elements and whatever else. They look really great in high def. A lot of these older interviews and stuff you see, that look really crap, but like kind of standard def, whatever, but they actually look really quite good. It's got, also got a theatrical trailer on there too. Again, I do recommend that one, but it's, it's not a fantastic film. Next up, we have got Scarface. This is not the Al Pacino one. This is the original version with Paul Muni from 1932. It's a gangster film from Universal. Uh, so, of course, like uh, kind of predates the film noir kind of uh, thing that came through in the 1940s. But it does have that real kind of dark, bleak, kind of, uh, you know, gangster kind of film. Uh, this is a pre-code movie as well. So it is brutal. It's incredibly violent. 
and um, it's got a lot of kind of really risque stuff in there as well. So obviously this is before Hollywood implemented their kind of censorship codes and all of that kind of stuff. So it's really interesting to take a look back at movies that were made in this period because a lot of the stuff you think, wow, I'm surprised they got away with that back then. It's because that was just completely unregulated. Uh, but I really love this. This is the first time I've checked this out. I have been wanting to see this one for years and years and years and I really, really loved it. The, uh, the transfer on this is terrific. You're gonna notice a lot, a lot of film grain on this one. Uh, films in the 1930s, uh, they always have a lot of grain. Uh, the amount of lighting that they had to use to, to, to shoot their films results in a lot of like overblown white and a lot of, a lot of grain. It's not an imperfection of the print, it is just simply that's just how movies from this period looked and this is scrubbed up looking really really beautiful. This release here does include both versions of the film. There is a theatrical version and an alternate version which is like a censored version. The, the studio believed that the ending of the movie was too dark, too grim, too violent that they wanted to go back and shoot kind of like a happier, softer ending to it. Um, and I believe both versions did go to cinemas. Um, but the version that did become kind of like the the normal version for many years was that alternate censored cut. But this version right here, it restores both versions of the movie that you can uh, that you can check out. There's quite a lot of special features on here. There's an audio commentary with film historian Drew Casper on the theatrical version of the film. Uh, there's a video interview with film critic Matthew Sweet and a video interview with screenwriter and film critic Tony Ryans. Uh, these three features right here have been produced exclusively for this release, so they brand new. There's also a theatrical trailer on here and there is an introduction by TCM Classic Movies host and film historian Robert Osborne which does kind of explain the idea of the two different cuts of this movie so it's uh, it's uh, I think it's important to kind of take a look at that when you uh, before you check out the film. It also has the alternate ending on there as a, as a special feature if you want to go and just check that one out separately. Again really really happy with uh, absolutely everything on this release all round. The special features are great, the transfer is great and the movie is really great as well. If you're a fan of classic cinema this is a must grab. Uh, if you love the Al Pacino Scarface it's definitely interesting to go back and take a look at this one. Very very cool. I highly recommend This is one of my favorite imprints so far. Highly recommend it. Next up here is number 38, The Two Worlds of Jenny Logan. This is a television movie from 1979 and it stars um, Lindsay Wagner, who was the bionic woman. So this is more of like a cult film than anything else. This movie wasn't fantastic. Again, this is a tally movie from the late 1970s. So you can really kind of assume what kind of a film it is. It's very melodramatic, it's very soapy. Um, but I thought for a tally movie, particularly one of the time, the production values are actually quite good. The story is really quite riveting. This is a woman that um, kind of, that they move into a, she moves into a, a, a house with her, her partner. And it's this old rundown house and she finds this old antique wedding dress in the attic. And when she puts it on, she's, she's transferred or she's, she time travels into the past where she starts this love affair with this guy in the past and then he's, she's kind of travelling between two timelines and kind of trying to live in two lives. The two worlds of Jenny Logan. I thought it was quite a good story. Again, very melodramatic, very soapy, not usually my kind of thing. But I thought it was okay for, for what it is. And particularly, again, for a television movie, one that was made in the 1970s, this comes up looking really, really beautiful in high definition. So if you like this movie or if you're in this, into this kind of thing, this is one that I think I would recommend to you. It doesn't really have a lot in the way of special features. It's got an audio commentary by film critic Kevin Lyons, which was recorded in 2020 specifically for this release. It also has a television trailer. And now the television trailer looks like it's just a port from someone's VHS recording of it. Uh, but it's, it's kind of a, a nice little thing to include on there to see how this movie, I guess, was advertised back in the day. Again, uh, if you're not into these kind of TV melodramatic soapy kind of things from the 70s, maybe give this one a, a bit of a skip. But if you are into, in, into that kind of stuff, cult stuff, again, Lindsay Wagner is in here who is a cult figure. Uh, definitely check it out. You should get a bit of a kick out of it. Next up, we've got The Mothman Prophecies. This was released in 2002. It stars Richard Gere, Laura Linney, and Deborah Messing. It's kind of like a horror thriller kind of movie. Kind of more, I guess, fringes on thriller than horror. Uh, Richard Gere's character here, his wife and him get in, a, in an accident, a uh, car accident where she passes away. But before she passes away, she's been having these weird visions of this creature called the Mothman. And uh, many, many years later, Richard Gere, who is a journalist, he travels somehow 
He's, he's in his car and he somehow winds up in this kind of town in the middle of nowhere. He has no idea how he got there, but when he's there, he starts to realize that this Mothman has been kind of sidled around town and he kind of, he interjects with his past and all these kind of things start lining up where, you know, I don't want to say too much uh, without spoiling it. This is a really good movie. This is one that I've been wanting to see for a very, very long time. This has been released on Blu-ray by Viavision a number of years ago, maybe two or three years ago, they released it as like a special edition. And I believe it went out of print really, really quickly because people have been wanting to get their hands on this for a long time. So they have reissued this as part of the, um, as part of the imprint collection, I believe. This so far is the first one that they have reissued. One of their previous releases they've reissued as part of the imprint line. And they're doing another one, I think, in a couple of lines down, uh, a couple of waves down the line. The Dead Zone, they are re they previously had that on Blu-ray. They're reissuing as part of the imprint line. So it's interesting to see where they are going with this line now. There are a ton of special features on here. As I said, Biovision have previously released this as a special edition. So most of the stuff on here has come from that particular edition. There's a bunch of making of featurettes, uh, music videos, deleted scenes. Um, but then there is also a bunch of new stuff uh, which has been created specifically for this release. So if you have picked up the last one, you're a fan of the movie, definitely, this is definitely something that you probably do want to pick up because it's got a bunch of new great stuff on here. Interview with the director, uh, Mark Pallington. Interview with the editor, Brian Burden. An interview with the film's composers and an interview with the production designer, Richard Hoover. So there's a lot of really great stuff on here. Again, if you're a fan of this movie, even if you do already own it, like you're a diehard fan, you probably do want to pick up this special edition. Otherwise, if you're just a fan of these kinds of thrillers from the early 2000s, again, it's very generic. There are a lot of movies like this made around the time. It's nothing really incredibly special, but it's a fun movie and I really did enjoy it. So I would recommend picking that one up. Next up is Timeline. This is the final one from this wave. It's got Paul Walker, Billy Connolly, Gerard Butler, Francis O'Connor. Great cast. This is from 2003. I think this might be the kind of newest film that has been put into the uh, imprint line so far. I'm not too sure about that, but I think it might be. This is also being directed by Richard Donner, who, of course, directed the original Superman movie. Uh, so I thought this was quite good. This is kind of like a time travel movie. Again, there are a lot of these kind of time travel movies in the early 2000s. This is about a team of excavators, a science research team, who was in France, kind of digging up this excavation site. And one of them, the head researcher, Billy Connolly, uh, winds up traveling back in time somehow. And then the team of research has discovers that, they, that this that the team that they are part of has built a time machine and they then have to get into the time machine and go back in time to travel back in time and bring him back but of course everything goes wrong and the time machine explodes as they're time traveling and they've got like this very brief moment of time very brief period of time that they got to get back through this wormhole and back into the modern time before it closes and they can't get back very generic very like you've seen it all before but I thought it was a lot of fun, particularly to see a very early performance uh, from Paul Walker and Gerard Butler as well. Um, I thought it was interesting. Like, this is one of those cult movies. It's one I don't think I've ever really even heard of before. Um, so it was uh, interesting one for me that I was kind of, yeah, you know, interested to, to get into and have a look at. There's nothing incredibly special about this release. Uh, this is the first time it's on Blu-ray, but a bunch of the special features that are on here, well, pretty much all the special features that are on here, uh, have been previously released, I guess, on the DVD of this. There's just a bunch of featurettes on here. Um, interview with Jerry Goldsmith, the biographer, film uh, music historian Jeff Bond, and an interview uh, with the composer Brian Taylor, and a theatrical trailer. So it's got a wealth of stuff on there, but nothing new, as far as I can tell, has been created specifically for this release right here. But again, if you're a fan of this movie, you're a fan of these kinds of movies, I would recommend this. Just don't go into it expecting the greatest movie ever. All right, so that is it for wave six of the imprint line. There'll be another wave, I think, at the end of this month, so they will be covered very soon. I'll cover them when I get a chance to do that. Uh, but now I also do have another couple of box sets here that have been sent in from Viavision Entertainment. These are some classic Aussie TV shows that have just hit DVD. Uh, these have all been released on DVD at some point in the past, but gone out of print, so now Viavision are putting them back into print. That's what I love about this label. They're just putting all this great stuff back out. Now, this one right here, one the all-time great Aussie series, Stingers. This is uh, like a, a cop procedural procedural kind of drama, murder, mystery, like serialized kind of thing. They're undercover cops. 
uh, you know, infiltrating gangs and like murderers and <laughs> drug dealers, all that kind of stuff. It is uh, so much fun. Of course, Peter Phelps is in the lead role right there as Peter Church, who is one of the all-time great Aussie TV characters. Uh, and there's a whole, uh, just a whole lot of names that kind of pop in and out of this series. All the kind of who's who of Aussie actors from this time period do kind of pop their faces into this series at some point or another. Uh, this, as I said, went for eight years, but this is the first uh, four seasons. So this is like a volume one box set. Uh, as you can see, each four seasons, each of the four seasons is in its own individual case. But uh, they've got the same same covers right there. Um, so I believe the second box set is probably, I think it's due out in like June or July, which will have seasons five to eight. And I can't wait to get that too. But this is a really fantastic show. As I said, one of the greatest kind of cop procedural dramas uh, that has been on uh, action, action dramas that has been um, on Australian TV. It was a Channel 9 show. These pull up really great on DVD. Uh, this isn't the kind of show that I, I think will probably really have any kind of HD masters floating around out there. So the DVD does really suffice, and it does look great. It's not like a low-quality DVD. It looks very, very good. So I'm very happy to get Stingers into my collection, and uh, this is a must-see if you're a fan of these kinds of shows. It really is fantastic. Up next is Love My Way. This is the complete series, all three seasons of what I consider to be the greatest Australian TV show ever. Well, at least it's my favorite Aussie TV show ever made. This is like a drama, romance drama, which focuses on a single mother and her friends. Uh, they're in their early 30s, and it just kind of uh, focuses on their um, their travails through this life that they're trying to navigate through this uh, kind of period of their life where they're going from younger people into kind of middle age. Um, I turned 30 this year, so I feel like uh, revisiting this show, it's gonna hit maybe a little bit different than it did when I watched it when it was first, when it was brand new. Uh, this, came, this was released uh, between 2004 and 2007, so I was quite young when this show first came out. So now I feel again, yeah, when I revisit this properly, I feel like it's gonna hit harder. I did go back and check out uh, just a, a, an episode or two of it, and it is still as good as I remember it. It is just a brilliant show. It's an absolutely stacked cast in here too. Claudia Carvin, Asha Ketty, Dan Wiley, Brendan Kals, um, Sam Worthington was in this, and Ben Mendelsohn was in it for a little bit as well. It's just a terrific show. Great actors, great stories, great drama, great everything. It's just such a lovely, really heartfelt, heartwarming show as well. So again, definitely check this one out. As I said, it is as good as I remember it to be. Highly, 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 highly recommend this show. I love it so much. I can't wait to uh, properly dive back into that and just watch it all over again. There's not a whole lot of episodes, as I said, only three seasons, but they're short seasons, and it's uh, a really, really good show. And the follow-up to that was Tangle. I guess well, it's not like a, like a sequel or anything, but it was from the same producers as Love My Way. They also produced Offspring as well, which is another really, really good Australian series too. Uh, this one here, it also has Ben Mendelsohn in it. Uh, it's also got... Uh, Kat Stewart, who I really, really love. She's a fantastic actress. And a whole lot of other really great, fantastic Australian faces in there as well. Now, I never watched this entire series, so I'm so excited to finally go through it all. But what I have seen of it, I do remember really, really, really liking. Again, it is very similar to uh, Love My Way in its style and the kind of stories that it tells and all that, of course, again, from uh, the same producers there. This one actually, it focuses around two generations of these same families and kind of uh, goes between them and shows how their lives kind of interconnect and how the past affects the future and how the future unravels things from the past and all these kinds of things. It is a tangled web, I suppose. Um, and it is just a really fantastic, really well-written, beautiful show. Again, I never watched all of it, so I am excited to dive straight back into this. And thanks to Via Vision, I can do that. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to getting into that. So again, I highly recommend all of these great Aussie TV series that have been put out by Viavision. They're doing some really great work at the moment, getting a lot of these older shows out, which is really great. Love my way. If you get one, that one right there. And talking about great Aussie cinema, we've got a bunch of releases here from Umbrella Entertainment. Uh, now these aren't all Australian films, these are the only two Australian films in that batch, but you guys know how much I love and appreciate Umbrella's uh, hard yards that they've been putting in to getting a lot of great Aussie movies out on Blu-ray. Uh, particularly this one right here, of course, is the next edition of their Sunburnt Screen label. This is number three, or oh, number four. Uh, we of the Never Never, this is a film from the early 1980s. It stars Angela 
Angela Punch, McGregor, Arthur Dingham, Martin Vaughan, uh, John Jarrett is in there. Very, very young John Jarrett, who is, of course, the guy from, um, uh, from Wolf Creek, if you've seen that great Aussie horror film. Uh, this is a really, really beautiful movie. It's an epic. It goes for about 2 hours and 15 minutes, so it is quite long. Of course, reversible cover there, as you can see. Um, and it kind of focuses... Uh, it's a true story uh, about this woman who falls in love with a station master. She is an upper-class kind of socialite. He is a like a rough-and-tumble bushman. Uh, but for, for love, she moves out to the Australian outback. And it kind of focuses on her struggles to kind of fit in with this kind of way of life in really rough uh, colonial kind of Australian times. It touches on uh, themes of like race relations and um, and gender relations, all that kind of stuff. Of course, she's this woman who's living in the outback with a bunch of rough guys who don't really accept her presence to begin with and how she has to kind of win them over. And then also the relations that she has with the uh, the local indigenous community as well, who she sees are being treated very poorly. It is such a beautiful film. I really, really, really liked it. Uh, I feel like a lot of people, it is a very dated movie. It's a product of its time. It is very slow. It can be a little bit melodramatic at times. So it might not be a film that is for everybody, but again, if you're a fan of your classic Australian cinema, particularly these movies that Umbrella have been putting out on the Sunburn screens range, it is one that you really, really do have to check out. Uh, the transfer on this is just, man, it's gorgeous. The, 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 these remasters that Umbrella have been doing, I believe that this has come from a 4K scan. I could be incorrect, but I believe this has come from a 4K scan of like original uh, uh, negatives and all that, which is what Umbrella has been doing with all these sunburns. And it just looks stunning like this is the, the most gorgeous the movie has ever looked kind of compliment that we've got this one here it's called the furnace this is a recent aussie film it came out last year 2020 it's got uh, david wenham in there uh, who plays this kind of rough and tumble bushman bush ranger it's got this really wonderful young actor uh, by the name of armand malik in there as well who is just terrific i can't wait to see some more from him now he plays a camelier so a lot of Middle Eastern people were out here in Australia working as cameleers in early colonial Australia. And they had a very, very good relationship with the indigenous communities. And they kind of both had this symbiotic relationship where they were helping each other out. Now this, uh, this camelier gets caught up with this bushman who's stolen a bunch of gold from the crown and they both kind of agree to help each other out in some way and uh, the, the bushman promises to give the camelier his share in the gold and of course everything just goes wrong and the, and the outback and like there's double crossing and all that kind of stuff and it's very very good, it's a, it's a very 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 good movie. I love this so much. Um, the, the video quality of it is fantastic. It's a new movie, so it ought to look good, uh, especially from Umbrella, who put pride into their, their Blu-ray releases. Um, I just highly recommend it. Again, it's another one of these Aussie films that touches on uh, the themes of our colonial past, uh, our relationship with indigenous communities, so touch on race relations, all that kind of stuff there. Um, I think it's just a really, really beautiful movie, and I highly recommend this if you uh, love your Australian cinema or you just love a good story. This is true history right here and it is it's so wonderful so definitely pick that one up all right also from umbrella we've got a couple of catalog releases here uh one is an american film right here it's called a leap of faith which stars steve martin steve martin is one of my favorite comedic actors of all time i grew up on all of his movies i'm pretty sure i've seen everything that he's he, he's he's done but this one kind of evaded me for some reason it kind of slipped my radar uh, this is one I never saw. I was, I've always been aware of it, but I just never saw it. So I'm so happy Umbrella has finally released it on Blu-ray and give me a chance to see it. And it's a really wonderful movie. He plays a preacher man, a traveling preacher who goes around and does like the big kind of, um, you know, faith shows, or miracle man kind of stuff. But he is, uh, he, he's, he's a bit dodgy. He's a scammer, essentially. Uh, but the more work that he does, particularly in this little small town where all the people start affecting him in this particular way, he starts to realise that maybe his miracles are real. So it is a faith-based film, but it is more kind of like on the more mainstream edge of the faith-based kind of things. Um, and I think it works really well. I like it. It, um, it is a little bit schmaltzy. It gets, towards the end, it gets a, a, a little bit kind of schmaltzy and... 
you know, all, all that kind of stuff. But it is a, it's a nice, it's a nice movie. There's a lot of great laughs in here. It's not Steve Martin's most hilarious, but his character in here is really great as well. As you can see, uh, we've got the fantastic Liam Neeson is in this as well as uh, Deborah Winger too, who are all really great. Uh, we've also got this one here. This is a film from Italy called Django Shoots First. It is a spaghetti western. Uh, it stars Glenn Saxon in the lead role as Django. Now, there was a, a, an Italian film, an Italian western film called Django, which was such a huge, like, big blockbuster kind of movie. It hit it big in, in the West and, uh, and all of that. And because uh, copyright laws in Italy were so lax at this time, uh, there were a bunch of just rip-off movies that were made. Many of them with Django in the title. Some of them didn't even have a character named Django in them. But there were dozens and dozens of these knockoffs. This is one of the knockoffs. I believe it might actually be the first knockoff. But this one does have a character named Django in the lead. Uh, it's so fun. Spaghetti Westerns, uh, if, if you're familiar with them, they are just but essentially low budget westerns that were produced by Italian filmmakers. A lot of them were shot in uh, in Spain um, and they were so low budget that they would just pull in whatever actors they could and you would have Italian speaking actors, you would have Spanish speaking actors and then usually it would be like a westerner in the lead role to try and get uh, the attention of western audiences who would, be, who would be an English language speaker. So you've got people in these movies speaking Italian, you've got Spanish speakers, you've got the English speakers and then it's just all over overdubbed with one language at the end. In this case, it's Italian. In the case of like the good, the bad and the ugly, they overdub that in English, uh, whatever. So it's so much, they're just so much fun to watch. It really bad, really kind of over the top, melodramatic kind of stuff. Uh, but it's so fun. And this is a really good one with a really great premise that I really enjoyed. Uh, and it looks great. Again, Umbrella, first class when it comes to the transfers and stuff that they use on their releases. Uh, I believe they're probably very picky with what they do put out and uh, how they present their titles. So really, really, really great. I would highly recommend checking this one out if you're a fan of westerns, spaghetti westerns, um, cult movies like that. This is a really, really great release. And finally from Umbrella is the first season of Gangs of London. This is a Sky original series. I believe this debuted last year and I've heard nothing but good things about this show. It's got like five stars all round. I remember when it first came out, there was chatter all over the internet. People were saying it was absolutely fantastic. It focuses on underground gangs in London. I've got so much stuff here this month to, to watch that I haven't had a chance to check this one out just yet. I will be watching it very soon. I'll watch it over this month. And in the next video, I'll be doing, I'll give you my thoughts on the, on the series overall. Uh, but I did want to, because this is a, a fairly new release, I think it came out last month or even maybe even the month before that. Um, I did want to at least spotlight it on this video here that you can get this one right now from Umbrella Entertainment. Uh, really, really, really looking forward to getting into this one. And finally, we've got a stack of titles here from my friends over at Shock Entertainment. Firstly, we'll take a look at this big, massive pile right here of titles from their Hollywood Gold series. This is, of course, like their signature line. They released a bunch of great Hollywood classic movies. Um, and then ju I just gobble them all up. I love them so much. Um, they haven't released many on Blu-ray for quite a while, but I believe there are some Blu-rays coming in a couple of months' time that I'm very excited for. Now, this month, they've released a whole bunch more of the Jerry Lewis and uh, Dean Martin movies, as well as a... Uh, a, um, a Dick Van Dyke classic as well. Um, so I, was, I just had to get my hands on these. As you know, I've been, I've been getting them to send over all the Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis ones that they've been doing um, sort of as they go along. And we've got almost uh, we've got almost all of them in the collection now, which is great. Uh, we'll take a very quick look. Again, these are all just crazy, madcap, screwball comedies. There's like romance. There's a little bit of drama. There's a little bit of music. There's everything you can imagine from just great classic comedies. I love these so much. This month round, we've got That's My Boy, Jerry Lewis. Lewis plays this really bumbling uh, guy. He's always playing like a bumbling guy, but he's the bumbling son of uh, like an ace college football player and his, his father uh, bribes his way into this college football team and the team is like the only stipulation we will take him on but the only stipulation is that you have to pay the tuition of our actual star player so this rich wealthy father pays off the tuitions and as you can imagine Jerry Lewis just gets up to all this crazy madcap crazy stupid shit um, in, in this uh, in playing college football Everything that you'd imagine could go wrong does go wrong, basically. We've got Sailor's Beware, which is, or Sailor Beware, which is a great kind of nautical comedy. There are so many of these, like, comedies set in the Navy made back then. Dean, uh, like, Sinatra did a lot of them as well. Um, this one is really great. They are, they're, like, best friends in the Navy, and it's kind of their trials and tribulations of, you know, living and working in the Navy and, you know, trying their luck with the girls 
with not much luck at all. Uh, so that's a lot of fun there as well. Partners is like a screwball uh, western comedy where uh, these two, their fathers, they were cowboys in the old west and um, they uh, they owned like this, this ranch. But as the years have gone on, the fathers have passed on, the ranch is about to be taken over by these greedy kind of corporations or whatever. These two decide to head back to the old west to try and win, ba uh, win back this property. And while they get there, they decide to learn to become real cowboys and of course disastrous results ensue. Uh, we've got this one right here. It's called The Delicate Delinquent. This is actually Jerry Lewis's first solo movie without Dean Martin. I believe first solo movie uh, completely. He, he plays this bumbling janitor who somehow gets involved in this, um, in this brawl with a local gang of young youth thieves, uh, gang, gang youths. And um, the cops come along and they pinch him and they, you know, they, they, uh, they, they, they confuse him for a member of the gang. And they take him into this kind of program where they try and rehabilitate him by turning him into a cop. And as you can imagine with Jerry Lewis, he just try, he just gets in over his head and thinks he's really cool becoming this cop and just takes on this really crazy persona. So much fun. I love that. It's probably one of Jerry Lewis's best solo movies out of the lot. We've also got The Patsy. Another classic Jerry Lewis solo film. Uh, this one, he, uh, this uh, like head of a classic or like a, a, a super famous TV show dies and the network decides to cast an unknown to replace him. The only problem is he's not very good. And the deadline for new episodes is coming up and he's getting worse and worse and worse and he's just terrible. So of course, Jerry Lewis getting up to crazy Jerry Lewis stuff on the set of a TV show. Again, a lot of fun. This one here, we've got The Wrecking Crew. This is a Dean Martin um, solo film as well. This one comes from the late 1960s. Um, so he's a little bit older in this one. Um, and this one, if you know the, if you're familiar with uh, Once, a Time, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, the latest Quentin Tarantino film, uh, there's the scene where Sharon Tate, or played by Margot Robbie, goes to the cinema to see herself in the film that she's just done. It's The Wrecking Crew. So this one, of course, has uh, Sharon Tate in it as well. And you see a few clips from this movie in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So it's really great to actually get this on, uh, on DVD and finally get to actually see the movie that was in that movie. So I think, like, if you're a fan of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, you can get your hands on this movie now. It's great. Um, Dean Martin plays kind of like a James Bond kind of character. Uh, but it's, of course, it's like a comedy. It's a farce. And... Everything that can go wrong goes wrong, goes wrong. It's very slapstick, it's over the top, it's corny, it's not that great. It's probably on the lower tier of like Dean Martin movies or that, but it is a lot of fun as well. As you can imagine, movies from the 1960s, swinging 60s, it's, uh, it's got a bit of everything in there. So definitely check that one out if you love these things, or again, you're a fan of Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and you want to check out the actual film. And of course, uh, finally, we've got this one right here, which is a uh, classic Dick Van Dyke film. It's also got uh, James Garner and uh, Angie Dickinson in there as well. This one's great. Dick Van Dyke plays this painter, struggling painter who is not very popular. And his friend suggests that maybe he fakes his own death because when he dies, his works might become more popular. So he fakes a suicide and of course instantly his paintings become really popular and his friend is making lots and lots and lots of money uh, out, of, uh, out of selling his paintings and his friend gets in over his head and starts hitting on Dick Van Dyke's girlfriend and Dick Van Dyke gets a little bit jealous of it all and decides to frame his friend for his murder. So again it's a bit of a farce, a lot of slapstick screwball stuff, Dick Van Dyke is one of my personal favourites, Dick Van Dyke show. One of my favourite TV shows of all time. Great classic TV. And I just love his movies. I mean, Mary Poppins and, um, you know, all that stuff. So much fun. So definitely check that one out too if you're interested in all of them. That is the latest uh, kind of wave of Hollywood Gold series. Uh, there was a bunch of other ones too, but uh, I don't like to be too greedy. Uh, so I, these are the ones that I particularly asked for. The ones I was really, really interested in getting my hands on. We've got a couple of special interest titles here from Shock as well. We've got two brand new collections from uh, the History Channel. These are, there's uh, lots and lots of minutes worth of great stuff. This one's 660 minutes, this one's 780 minutes. This set here focuses on iconic leaders. So it's small documentaries on iconic leaders from throughout history. We've got like Alexander, uh, Alexander the Great, Caesar, Abraham Lincoln, Roosevelt, Lenin, uh, Adolf Hitler, Stalin, Churchill, Castro, Kennedy, 
uh, Gorbachev, etc., etc. So a lot of really great little documentaries, of course. History Channel, if you want to learn anything about anyone or anything, the History Channel documentaries are always the best place to go. This is a really fantastic series of little documentaries. And this one right here as well, Pioneering Minds, very similar thing. You've got a bunch of different episodes focused on different, um, I guess, scientific uh, pioneers, uh, people with incredible brains who you know, invented things, inventors and, and all that stuff. Uh, you've got like Confucius and Michelangelo, Nostradamus, uh, George Washington, Sir Isaac Newton, Benjamin Franklin, Charles Darwin, Jules Verne, H.G. Wells, Thomas Edison, Mark Twain, Vincent van Gogh. Um, so, you know, you've got artists, you've got scientists, you've got great thinkers. Um, and I'm so interested in not only world history, but like the history of of just mankind and the uh, and just crazy scientific endeavors and all that I just love it. So these are two really particularly really great collections right here. I've had a very quick look at both of them. Really great. And if you're into the, into this stuff, you like learning about your history and I guess philosophy and all that kind of stuff. These are really two really good places to start. I would always go with that History Channel logo right there. If you see that on anything, it usually means that it's going to be like top tier stuff. And we've got the complete series of Chappelle's Show. Man, this is one of the greatest, uh, I guess, sketch comedy shows that's ever been on. Uh, this was done for the co for Comedy Central uh, back kind of in the early 2000s, I guess it was. Um, and Dave Chappelle is one of the funniest guys around. Uh, this series combines skets, really crazy sketch comedy with a little bit of stand-up material peppered throughout as well. Uh, they did two seasons of it and then they started filming the third season and he strangely decided to just stop. And he stopped turning up to work and then he fled the country. He went to South Africa and then went, lived in South Africa for ages. No one really knew why, whether he'd run away from problems or whether he was it was just too much pressure for him. No one really still quite knows what happened, but uh, by all his reports, it's kind of like it just got a bit too much. He had to get out. Uh, so they put off the third season for, for ages and ages and ages, and then finally it looked like he wasn't coming back, and they just finished it off without him. So that became what is called, like, The Lost Episode, Season 3, The Lost Episodes. They're included uh, in this set as well. Again, these have all been released individually in the past. I believe there's even been a complete set before, um, but this is, uh, yeah, so you've got all of them in there, uh, which is really great. But yeah, um, but, uh, Shock Entertainment have finally put this back on the market because it's been out of print for a while. Um, I believe that this was one that Beyond Home Entertainment released a while ago, but Beyond uh, recently uh, went out of business. They closed down uh, production and all that kind of stuff, and uh, Shock has picked up all of their titles. So you see that Shock is releasing all the old Nickelodeon stuff now as well, all that great stuff that uh, Beyond Home Entertainment put out there on the market. It's now all back in print, which is great. So yeah, Chappelle Show, if you love your comedy, you love Dave Chappelle, this is a must-grab series right here. I watched all of it. Actually, I'm not sure if I watched all of it, but I, I watched it regularly when it was on TV in its original run. So I'm very excited to go back and check it all out. So excited for that. All right, so as far as stuff that's been sent in from the distributors, that is it for this video. I do have a quite substantial little pile of stuff here of uh, titles that I have personally gone out and bought myself, whether that be in the stores or whether I've imported it online. We'll go through these very, very, very briefly uh, because I know this video is running a little bit over time anyway. So let's start here. Um, I bought these three as part of JB Hi-Fi's recent like buy two, get one free sale. Um, I usually don't pay, these are brand new releases. I usually don't buy brand new releases until they're like part of like the two for 30 deal or two for 20 deal or whatever but I was dying to see Promising Young Woman and I was dying to see The Dry so I was like you know what I don't mind paying well I wasn't full price because I got to buy two get one free but it was still like $20 a movie which is a little bit more than I would usually pay uh, but I had to buy them I had to see them straight away Promising Young Woman uh, very briefly I loved I adored I knew I would I love Carrie Mulligan this is just such a great film if you don't know anything about it don't watch any trailers or anything I managed to avoid everything thankfully and it's such just a surprise of a movie it's completely different to what you would expect and I love it this is my favorite movie in a very 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 long time and she is just she is amazing. She is, a, a, I think she's my favorite actress around at the moment. Just terrific. Um, the Dry is great as well. Really great Aussie film with Eric Banner in the lead. It's like a murder mystery kind of thing. And uh, he is just terrific in this. This is his first Australian movie for a very long time. And uh, he just knocks it out of the park. It's so, so great. Check that one out. 
And Shadow in the Cloud is the third one that I got as part of this. This is like a really schlocky B-movie kind of thing. Don't go into this expecting anything more because it really is just over the top. It's bomba bombastic. It's crazy. It's If you go into this expecting something serious, you're going to be very disappointed because this is just a movie that does begs not to be taken seriously. I love Chloe Grace Moretz. She does some really great stuff as well. She's a really fantastic actress and uh, she's terrific in this. It's so much fun. A lot of this movie is just her by herself without anyone else in the scene um, and it's almost like a bottle movie in some respect um, again I don't want to spoil too much of it though but she really holds her own on the screen and it's such a fun movie I loved it it's got a trash rating on IMDb like four something but I had so so much fun with that because it's just a movie that you just gotta have fun with. Um, as part of that deal, I also picked up these three as well picked up the Presidio it's this um, I guess from the 1990s cop drama murder mystery kind of thing it's not fantastic it's a little bit generic but it's one i've been wanted, wanting to see for a long time so i did pick that one up we've got sid and nancy don't know too much about this one this is uh, about uh, nancy spongen and sid vicious um of course the uh, you know the rock star the punk rock star from the 19 i suppose 1980s maybe 1970s uh, it's got gary oldman in the lead role and chloe webb don't really know much about this i don't know much about sid vicious or anything but i you know i always like to pick up as many catalog releases as i can and i do love gary oldman and i love uh, sony's classics remastered range right there so i'm excited to uh, to dive into that one of course sid vicious from the sex pistols so i'm uh, yeah i'm excited to check that one out when i can and this one right here is called the nightingale this is an Australian like uh, horror thriller from the same filmmaker, uh, Jennifer Kent, who did The Babadook. Still haven't seen that one either, but I've heard really great things about this. Apparently it's very harrowing and just really full on. So I'm excited to watch that one as well. Um, I also picked this one up. Uh, this was part of, again, part of the Classics Remastered range. Classic movie called The Lady Killers. It's got Alec Guinness. Um, uh, Peter Sellers is in there and a lot of great other classic actors in there too. Uh, this is one of the great um, Ealing comedies that were made uh, back in the, the mid-1950s in London, uh, Ealing Studios. It's just, it, I've, I've never seen it. This is one of those classics I still need to tick off my list. And every great thing you've heard about this movie in the past is so true. It's just so, so wonderful. All the performers, particularly Alec Guinness, are really great. And it's this fun, really black comedy, murder, plot kind of thing. I loved it so much. Check that one out. I also picked this one up recently uh, from, uh, I think Amazon, I picked this one up. This was went down to like half price, $15. Uh, Mad Man titles don't often go on sale. So I picked this one up. Um, it's also a friend of mine from over in the States, Derek, who gets a lot, has get, got a lot of stuff for me in the past and he wanted this one. So we organized like a trade where I got him a copy of this and he's sending me something else. And um, I had to pick a copy of it up for myself as well because I've been really, really looking forward to checking this one out. Uh, it was directed by Lee Wan who directed um, The Invisible Man. So, um, and it was produced for Blumhouse as well. So I'm excited to see this. Like a guesser, I don't know anything about it. I know it's like a real thriller. I don't know if it, it looks like it's got kind of horror vibes going on, uh, science fiction-y kind of thing. I don't know, but I've heard really fantastic things about it and I can't wait to see it. We've got some other classic movies to take a look at here. I picked up two of the um, Warner Archive titles. There was like a story that came out a while ago that said um, Warner, Warner Brothers was closing down their physical media arms, both Warner Home Media and the Archive Collection. I panicked a little bit and I kind of knew, I was like, I. I feel like I'm probably gonna have quite a bit more time to be able to get these, but I just, I was like, I want, I need these, and if I can't get them at any point, I'm gonna be so disappointed. Uh, it happened on Fifth Avenue and The Shop Around the Corner, two of my favorite classic Christmas movies. I watch these every single year, so I had to get them on Blu-ray. I paid like $25 each for them. Usually I would wait for the Warner Archive titles to go down to like $19, $20, uh, but I just, I just had to grab them. I was like, I don't care, I'll pay, I'll pay the extra 10 bucks. Just, just, for that, that safety of having them in the collection. I love those. If you don't have them, if you haven't seen them, I highly recommend them. I also picked up the Ten Commandments that just came out recently on 4K. Uh, it's released here in Australia too, but I wanted to pick it up from the States in this slipcover right here. I'm not like so determined to get every single movie in slipcovers anymore because, again, this would have cost me like 12 bucks if I picked it up, $15 if I picked it up in a sale here in Australia. Um, but, and I paid like $30 for this on Amazon US. 
But I just wanted to get in this slip cover. It's also got extra discs and stuff in there too that the Australian edition doesn't come with. And I just, I love the movie. It's one of my favorites. So I had to pick that one up from the States. I love that slip. And while I was at it, I picked up the previous release of it on Blu-ray, this gorgeous little digi book, uh, digi, yeah, digi book, digi book slash digi pack kind of edition here. Um, this is just Blu-ray only. Now I picked this one up because it includes the original 1923 silent version as well, which I don't have in my collection and strangely wasn't bundled with this one. And funnily enough, the disc that has the 1923 feature on it actually has like the feature length documentary on the Ten Commandments, uh, the, 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 the 1956 version. So if I wanted to, which I probably will want to next time I revisit this, watch the feature length making of Doco, I need that 1923 movie disc, which is not included in this. Anyway, this was on special for about $20, I think because the new version has just come out, so they're trying to clear this out. Um, so I picked this one up along with it as well. I love this, I love this box right here. I missed out on the big Ultimate Collection they released years ago. I, was, I, I put off buying that for ages and ages and ages. It went out of print, so I missed my chance on that, and I just eventually did settle with this one in the end. Now you guys know that I've been picking up a lot of um, DC animation recently. Um, so I picked up this one recently. I think it was part of the buy to get one free deal as well. I must have matched that with the Lady Killers and maybe something else that I talked about maybe last month or something. I'm not too sure. Uh, but I did pick this one up. It's the Teen Titans Judas Contract. I don't really know much about this um, but I'm trying to work my way through all these DC animated movies. I'm enjoying them for the most part. And while I'm at it I noticed that these were going out of print. They were getting very hard to get, yeah, get my hands on. Batman, The Brave and The Bold. So I've got the complete series of that now. I imported all of those. Series 1, 2 and 3. Uh, series 2, I believe, is like out of print. You can't get it anywhere except the Warner Archives store at the moment. Um, so I had to get that one on eBay. I used like a $5 voucher and whatever else. So I got this for, I think, about $23. Whereas these cost me like 20 I don't know, it was like $21 or something each for these two here. Uh, maybe a little bit, bit more, I'm not too sure. But I got those two on Amazon Australia. And I think now season one has gone out of print. You can't get that now, so you're gonna get three. But as these are Warner Archive ones, they do often go out of print and then come back into print because they're like print on demand kind of things. So they'll do like a big batch at, 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 like every now and then as the demand comes in. So anyway, I've picked those three up. Apparently it's a really good series. I'm looking forward to seeing that. And also I got this one here from the Warner Archive collection too, which is the latest Hanna-Barbera release, which is Josie and the Pussycats in outer space. I don't ever really remember watching this one. A couple of months back, you remember I'd picked up the uh, original Josie and the Pussycat series, but now I've got the, uh, the sequel series too, which is in outer space. So I'm looking forward to checking that out. Look guys, that is absolutely everything. This has been a very, very long video. I apologize about the runtime on this one, but I'm just trying to get as much stuff into these as I can, particularly now as I seem to only be doing them maybe every couple of months uh, because of the amount of stuff that comes in, it takes me a while to go through them all. So I do just kind of want to do these videos a bit more sporadically now, but it does mean that they'll be more kind of jam packed into them as we go along. And again, the imprint uh, titles, if you're interested in my reviews on those, they will be bundled into these videos now. I just want to get like one, big Blu-ray DVD haul video up every, you know, maybe every couple of months now. There might be a couple of months where I go back to back, but we'll see how it goes. Anyway, guys, thanks for sticking around. Um, I love that you guys are still watching these movies, these videos. These are really the earliest kind of videos that I, that I ever did on this platform. And to see that I still have a, a decent viewership of people who are coming back to them, I think is wonderful. I'm always here to promote uh, physical media to people who will listen and people who are interested. So I do appreciate you uh, sticking around and still watching these videos. Uh, I, I, I love it so much and I will do these. I will continue to do these as long as physical media is around and flourishing. I will support it and I will, I will sing my praises from the rooftops as long as I can. Thank you so much once again for watching. Thanks to all the distributors for sending in stuff for this video for the purposes of my reviews. <sighs> I'm out of breath now. I gotta go. Thanks so much guys, I'll see you later. Hey everyone, if you haven't yet, smash that big old subscribe button up on your screen to keep up to date with all my content and hit that like button down below. Also don't forget to check me out on social media and please consider supporting me over on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month for exclusive videos, early access content and to get your name up on the screen. Thanks again for watching.